think it's also, uh, I think they're, um, the likes of all of the liberal Democrats, are also uh, aware that there, that there are, um, uh, well, maybe different conventions and reason giving and so forth, right? Um, but, um, but nevertheless, they want to um, keep the gains of the enlightenment. Um, so, so I'm just wondering, uh, I'm just wondering if you think that uh, that project is doomed to failure, or, oh, perhaps that's too strong a way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, does your question imply that the Enlightenment, <coughs> capital E Enlightenment, translates to rationality, capital R rationality? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah. In that case, it wouldn't seem, um, I mean, that's what, I mean, there seems to be a, uh, a tension there. Yeah, I, I, in my mind, there's a vast difference and, uh, in, in this way. I think when we use capital E, for enlightenment, at least the way I read it, we're really talking about historical institutions. We're talking about movements. We're talking about people. We're talking about an encyclopedia, for example. We're talking about Kant says, say, what is enlightenment? We're talking about the Berliner Monatschrift, you know, the journal. Um, we're talking about uh, Descartes. Having done his earlier works in Latin, writing the others in French, which was considered uh, vernacular and Creole and bad manners, or the Germans, you know, founding uh, out of the uh, uh, university department a journal where they said, look, if you want to publish a philosophy paper in our journal, you have to write in German. You can't write in Latin. So someone like Kant will switch from his dissertation on winds in German to, you know, the later works that are in German. Uh, or, or the Scottish moralists, you know, you think about Hume, Hutchinson, and the others trying to reform uh, not just uh, sc Scotland Ed and around Edinburgh, but also in London, uh, that, uh, against uh, also some monarchical arguments that the king has a divine right to rule. They want to um, think differently about society and, and, and progress, historical progress. I think about the French Revolution. I think about the American Revolution. I think about events in Philadelphia. I think about the Haitian Revolution, where the first and perhaps the only state in human history where slaves successfully revolted and uh, overthrew the, the, the uh, took, took over control of uh, an apparatus of state that have legalized their own subjection. So uh, when I use capital E, I can give you these collections and tell you if you find some other better way to capture this spirit and these institutions, that uh, these post-revolutionary institutions that reinforced it. Say if you think about France, you know, where the Catholic Church is still a church, but now it's a national church. Uh, they had a national assembly for the first time, the American institution, the first democracy in the world. Uh, if you find a different way to just give me a quick panoptic view of this century, uh, I would trade the word enlightenment any time. But I, I'm not sh when I try to do the same thing about re rational, reasonable rationality with a capital R, uh, of course, I can think of collections like that. I'd go to the Greeks if you're a philosopher or political scientists, or go and repeat what I've just said about liberalism, the history of liberalism in the Constitution from someone like Locke on to, uh, to Rousseau to Kant, people who, again, played into, and some of them were accused of being uh, the moral uh, instigator of the revolution. So uh, I, I think that uh, I, I can't imagine Habermas defending reason with a capital R in the metaphysical sense. I don't, uh, th it's definitely those, that two volume uh, um, uh, 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 rational, rational action, what's the, what's the title of the book? Anyway, the, the second volume, uh, 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 Reason and Rationalism in a Society, he doesn't do anything like that, but he has a two volume uh, theory of communicative action. Uh, that book, uh, those, that, that those two volumes don't do that. And, and he also got into this debate with the French, uh, with Foucault and the others. I think it's called uh, the, uh, the Unfinished Project of Modernity. Uh, he, he critiques postmodernism, but he doesn't revert back to uh, that sort of high enlightenment uh, idea that there's reason with a capital R. So, I don't know if this helps, but. Uh, we can talk about it uh, more. If, if. 
if I, if I missed it. On that note, though, just for, for anyone who's a student in the room, tomorrow there's a student only, students only uh, session. Uh, 11.30 to 1 in this room, pizza and pop provided, uh, no faculty sneaking in. Um, <coughs> so on behalf of uh, sponsors at the University of Alberta, particularly the Department of Philosophy, at Athabasca University, uh, particularly uh, the May program, Master's of Arts and Integrated Studies, and Dr. Marcus Bondi sitting there. And all, um, I, the Department of Political Science, would you please join me in thanking